this video, we will discuss how to locate direct buried secondary cable faults using the Ross meter. The Ross meter, also known as the ACVGD, is an AC voltage gradient detector, which locates direct buried secondary cable faults. Since 1975, linemen have trusted the Ross meter to quickly, effectively, and safely locate these types of faults. The ergonomically designed Ross meter reduces risks of electrical contacts and any temptation to cut corners. With a 30 second setup and teardown time, it's the industry leader for speed and efficiency when answering trouble calls concerning circuits with direct buried secondary cable faults. The Ross meter comes complete with the ACVGD meter, two 9 volt batteries, a military grade carrying case, an instruction manual, and two probes with leads. The Ross meter has the following features. A shoulder strap, two jacks for the probe leads, an on-off switch, the scale adjust knob, a battery test button, and the analog meter. The analog meter serves two purposes, to display the strength of the batteries and to indicate the detection of gradient voltage in the ground. Before you begin to use the meter, be sure to turn the scale adjust knob clockwise until it stops. Then turn the meter on and check that the batteries are good enough to ensure proper operation. Press the battery test button. The analog meter should display 0.7 or higher. A reading of 0.9 means that the batteries are in excellent condition. If the meter displays a number below 0.7, you will need to replace both batteries. To replace batteries, simply remove the four screws from the faceplate. Lift the faceplate off of the case, locate the batteries, and replace them both. Most secondary cable fault locators use the low voltage capacitive discharge method to locate faults. These types of locators are active in nature, meaning the operator must first take the time to safely isolate the faulted cable and then connect a surge generator to the cable in order to locate the fault. But the Ross meter is different from those types of locators in that it is passive in nature, which means the operator can leave the line energized while locating the fault, and the Ross meter will use the existing gradients of voltage created by the fault on the cable. There's no need to isolate the source or load because the Ross meter detects faults without tapping into the line. Since there is no excessive setup or teardown, the Ross meter reduces operation time by 90%. When using the Ross meter, you do not need to know the exact path of the buried cable. The transformer and service locations are known, and where you want to try to get readings first is about two-thirds the distance from the transformer towards the service location. To illustrate how the Ross meter works, let's assume that the area directly above the fault is a deep red and each of the darker outside gradient rings represent a decrease in voltage as they get further away from the fault. The Ross meter reads these differences as the operator probes towards the faulted section in the direct buried cable. You will know that you are getting closer to the fault because you will see a higher reading on the meter display each time you probe the ground. Once the meter pegs the needle all the way to the extreme right of the scale, you will have to reduce the scale by turning the scale adjust knob counterclockwise until the needle on the meter reads 0.4. You must do this in order to bring the needle on the meter back onto scale so you can continue to see relative readings while you're probing. Each time the meter reaches the extreme far right of the scale, reduce the scale again until the meter reads 0.4. Do not increase the scale after you have begun to probe for the fault. Doing so will result in a fault's location for the fault. As you continue to probe the ground, you will see higher readings as each probe enters each gradient ring. At some point, you will see a change in the readings where the reading begins to drop. When the meter reading does not exceed 0.4 on the scale, you are very close to the fault. Continue probing in and around this particular area. Somewhere within this spot, you will find that the needle in the meter will remain on zero. In fact, 
when you are standing directly above the fault with each probe equally distant from the fault point, you will get a zero reading on the meter. Because the voltage gradient rings on the ground are in the shapes of circles, there's a difference in voltage between the rings. When you're directly above the fault, you are in the bullseye. In the bullseye, there is no difference in voltage detected between the two probes in the same gradient area. Mark this point precisely, then continue to probe the cable route for additional faults. Multiple faults may reveal a cable that may need replacement instead of repair. An important point to make is the operator must make note that the transformer zone has gradient rings around it, just like the fault zone. So the operator will get readings near the transformer similar to the readings found in the fault zone, since the currents are flowing to it as the other point of the Earth's circuit. Keep in mind that it may be a little bit more challenging to locate the fault if it is within the transformer zone. Here the operator is probing for the fault. In this case, the cable route has not been marked on the ground. Instead, the operator is using the readings on the Ross meter to lead him towards the fault. Remember to reduce the scale when the needle maxes out to the right. This will allow you to continue to get relative readings. Continue to move into the direction which gives you increased readings. Keep in mind that you're looking for a zero reading within the bullseye. There you will find the fault in the very center of all of the gradient readings. You may want to mark this spot for easy identification prior to digging. If you find that by chance you have a secondary neutral fault, you will need to isolate the neutral and then energize it. Then you can probe the cable route again as if it were a secondary phase fault. Be sure to follow company safety procedures when completing this step. Should there be a direct buried secondary cable fault under asphalt or concrete, we recommend that you wet the cable path located under this type of surface. Doing so will make the surface more conductive, allowing the Ross meter to better detect the gradients. Sometimes, after probing out a cable route, you may not be able to detect any gradients in the ground using the Ross meter, especially if the secondary is fed from an overhead source. In that case, the fault may be in the riser. The Ross meter can be used to determine if there is a fault in the riser. With one probe placed in the earth approximately two feet from the pole, use the other probe to take readings up the riser. If it is a wooden pole, probe in the vicinity of the riser and the Ross meter will read the gradient voltage leaking into the wooden pole. The Ross meter requires only seven steps to locate secondary cable faults. A single operator can locate the fault in a fraction of the time it takes to use other methods and devices. In fact, you can use the Ross meter to locate a fault within 10 to 15 minutes of arriving on scene. Other methods and instruments require two to three men and the use of 30 or more safety procedures and steps to isolate the cable, energize it, and then locate the fault, which can take up to 90 minutes to complete. As a result, the Ross meter is the most efficient device used to locate faults. This efficiency frees crews the time to work on other operation and construction activities, reducing overall global costs. With greater efficiency and no excessive energy used to diagnose a problem, the Ross meter helps reduce costs and saves energy. The Ross meter is the total solution for safety, time, costs, and conservation. For more information about the Ross Meter, please visit therossmeter.com.